Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! At a time of crisis, you turn to experience, and we are in a time of crisis. We have a weak and unstable government determined to drag this country out of the EU, but they are woefully unprepared. I mean, David Davis, chief Brexit negotiator, turned up to the talks without any notes. But there's one man who really knows what he's talking about when it comes to Britain and Europe. And that's Tony Blair. Mm -hmm. Whatever you think of him, he is <laughs> he undeniably has lots of experience, Carol Malone. I'm going. And he's worried about the direction we're taking. Here's a clip of what he had to say on Sophie Ridge on Sunday. I think it's possible now that Brexit doesn't happen. I think it's absolutely necessary that it doesn't happen because I think every day is bringing us fresh evidence that it's doing us damage. As you all know, I am a Remainer, and I really hope there's some way Brexit can be reversed. But if it can't, Theresa May should get Tony Blair on board to help deliver her a smart Brexit. Now is not the time for partisan and divisions. It's about what's best for Britain. And dare I say it, it may be time to bring back Blair. Mm. Good God, oh. <laughs> I do, I do try hard some days to try and agree with you on some things, but it's just, I, I can't do it. It's not possible, I don't think. Bring back Tony Blair yeah. to On this out issue, Brexit. no question. Are you crazy? To help with it, yeah. Uh, when I think of Tony Blair, and I think back to, I think it was in 2004 or something, when uh, I think it was Eastern Europe, we were talking about immigration and lots of EU states then was talking about transitional controls to try and um, stem the flow or control the flow, and it was Tony Blair that decided, no, 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 we don't need to do that. You know, we had such um, um, an influx, and I don't really like that word, but we had such an influx of migrants at that point all those years ago. And I think that that's one of the reasons and one of the things that kind of created this feeling towards immigration that played a part in some people choosing to go for Brexit. That's my first point. So on that reason alone, I think his decisions that he's made in relation to the EU on that point are just fundamentally flawed, and I wouldn't want to be repeating that I would say that forward. it was a fear that was drummed up by a bunch of demagogues myself, but, you know, we well, can we'll, disagree we'll, on that. Yeah, we'll disagree. It was also, it was also um, I remember Gordon Brown, when he was calling Gillian um, Duffy a bigot, when she dared to express a very normal and sensible I'll give you control. that. I'll give you that one. Thank you. Um, so I don't want that person involved um, and influencing Brexit. I don't at all. But don't, wouldn't you agree that when it comes to dealing with Europe, he has a lot of experience, he understands how to negotiate with them, and actually, if you look at what he said in the last few months, there are a lot of people, a big part of this population, who agree with him. So my, my... Who, who've actually breathed a sigh of relief that there's somebody, a grown-up in the room, who's actually talking sense. Well, the second reason that I don't want him to be um, involved is that interview that you just played there, he went on to say about the people in Barnsley and Boston and all this, they didn't really understand what they voted for and that's why we had Brexit. And, I just but think, they were what? lied to. 350 million for the election. No, let me finish my final oh, point. Oh, James, I feel really strongly <laughs> about this. You all had your point. You all had your opportunity in the run-up to the referendum mm -hmm. to educate people in the positives of staying in the EU. You didn't. You focused on Project Fear. You focused on trying to scare people into staying into the EU. You ignored things like immigration that people were concerned about. So what I would say to Tony Blair and indeed to yourself. If you wanted people to stay in the EU, you had an opportunity and a stage to sell the benefits and to make sure people understood, and you failed in your mission. But wouldn't you also agree that we were up against 25 years of EU bashing by the British press? You still had your opportunity, June, and a platform. Yeah, but he's trotting out this lie. He well, wait, 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 Carol, I'm going to stop you there because she disagrees. Let's get Greg in and then I'd love to hear. Please, okay. Greg, go on. Well, I have problems with Blair, as you know, but uh, yes. uh, I happen to agree with most of what he says and saying at the moment about Europe, there's not a chance he's going to bring him in to negotiate anything. What I was interested in, what he said mm. this time, was that he believes, now, has he really talked to them or not? We don't know. But he believes that a number of leaders across Europe who will be willing to make changes, yeah. particularly to the freedom, freedom of movement, movement yeah. 
to keep I think us Macron, in. Definitely. And I, I think that is a route we could go if only we could work out how to Why get there. But this, but this, this is a lie, Greg. This is a lie. He's trotting out this lie that people in Europe are changing their minds about immigration. But you don't know No, that. it's not. No, I'm afraid it's not me saying it. Michael Barnier said last week, absolutely, he but said... Michael Barnier four, is one well, person. Hang, well, hang on a sec. He said the four cornerstones of the EU, you know, freedom of movement, of, of goods, of services, of people, of capital. Let me finish my point. Yeah. He said they were indivisible, that they would not change. So if Blair's so sure about these people he's been talking to, let us know who they are. The other lie he's trotting <laughs> out the other lie he's trotting out is that people are changing their minds on brexit and immigration no they're not blair's own poll by his own think tank last week said clearly 70 is a 75 percent of people said immigration no let me finish immigration was way too high 56 percent said brexit must mean brexit and the majority wanted a hard brexit over sovereign now no, this they is, didn't this that's is, not yes, true yes, that's yes, not did. what the figures Greg said, said. Greg, yes a let... majority Greg, said, Greg, said Rachel, that is exactly what Rachel, said. What, what, what do you think well, I think everyone knows what I feel about Remain, and I'm with you on it. Um, but I think that I, we have to accept that, in a sense, what you're, you've said is, is fantasy Brexit. It's bring back Blair and stop Brexit. And that just no, is not going to happen. No, what I've said is if Brexit is going well, to happen Blair for sure, then that I we think should he hold, should be part we should of the hold Brexit. Has it occurred to you that he's got Wait, a vested Carol? interest? Has has it Carol, to you that, hold on. Can, let Rachel can we just talk about Michel Barnier and, yeah. and freedom of movement and the, the four pillars which are indivisible? In, at the outset of the treaties, the freedom of movement was actually called freedom of workers. So what you had was people with jobs moving from yes. EU nation to yeah. EU, EU nation, nation. Yeah. which I think people across the piece would be much happier with than yeah. unchecked immigration mm -hmm. between the 28 EU nations. Which is better for given, everybody. Given that Germany had an open border policy which admitted 800,000 people or a million people into the EU uh, over the last few years. But on the, the matter of Brexit, I have had to accept, I have had to cross the pain barrier. 85% of the country voted for two part, the two main parties who have committed to leaving. Mm -hmm. I have to accept that we are leaving whatever Blair says at this mm -hmm. point. And today, the mm -hmm. EU said that there was no turning back. Article 50 has been triggered. It's maybe a negotiation tactic, we don't know, but EU has said it's irreversible. Well, and, you know, you're saying that Blair is talking about new bad news every day. No, hang on, what is the bad news that's happening every day? You know, well, we the have, bad we, news we have is the our currency is down, down by 12%. We have the highest employment in 40 our years. Our currency is down by 12%. Yes, and you know what, you know that's what that is? Because thing. that's market no, no, market Can we actually react? not have this one? Okay. This market is the Carol, to, to Carol. people like Tony. You're but pushing us beyond the point. Yeah, yeah. But let me just come back to your people like Tony. Come back to your figures. Your figures yeah. were wrong. Actually, My figures were not wrong. No, yes, they were. If you added up those figures, 60% said they either wanted a second referendum yeah. or, they, or they wanted. No, 20% no, said they wanted. Well, I've, got, I've got them in front of will me. Will you at one stage shut I've, up and I've listen to someone else? No, why don't you? You're, you're quoting Because I hear you have this. Good, Forget well, it. I'm going I'm to interrupt. Can we have a clip of Blair, uh, who uh, his second interview Jeez, with Sophie? Let's I have a clip of that. I think it happens if. There is a strong movement for change out in the country that starts to impact on MPs. And, you know, how that happens, second referendum, votes in Parliament and so on, I think that, in a sense, you get to that later. The question is, can you get a clear sense from the people in the country that the will that they expressed last June is, is shifting? And the, the point is, if... Whatever the deal is, once they return with the deal, I think that should be given, brought back to the people for us to decide on it. Okay, because there's the figures. Deal, there is the figures. Deal, and I would really appreciate it if, if you, you didn't tell me to shut well, up. If you look there at are the figures. figures 21% at 21%, second referendum. Well, and add it to the one above it, and you yeah. get to 60% what either, which is what I was trying to say before you kept interrupting. The G. Yes. Well, sorry, it's a debate. Michelle, program. how would that work? So what you're suggesting is that we negotiate something and then we bring it to the table for for a referendum or to parliament whatever to do what to so say we'll it, have it or we'll leave it but if it's a bad deal that is literally that sees us jumping off a cliff i think we need to give people a second option that's what i'm saying and the second option would be well maybe we don't take well, the deal well if we can but i mean if, as we are. if the eu it means what it says we can't well, I want to show one quick clip because I think if David Cameron had been able to do this, we may not be in this situation. Why should British taxpayers pay for new sewers in Budapest 
for a new underground system in Warsaw when our own public services are crumbling in London. You sit with our country's flag. You do not represent our country's interests. This is the year 2005, not 1945. We're not fighting each other anymore. These are our partners, they're our colleagues, and our future lies in Europe. Bring back 2005, that's what I say. Anyway. <laughs> and we might say to Farage that it, we spend 1.2% yeah. of our entire expenditure on the EU. But it's time for this week's Straight Talker. Who's been taking no prisoners and really saying it like it is? Well, Michelle, you've already decided to show everyone an entirely innocent picture of me and the Brexit secretary. So we might as well stick with the theme. In an astonishing Twitter tirade this week, the campaign director of Vote Leave, Dominic Cummings, often called the brains behind Brexit, had this to say about David Davis. DD is manufactured exactly to specification as the perfect stooge for Haywood, Mr. Haywood being the civil servant for negotiating Brexit. Thick as mince, lazy as a toad, <laughs> and vain as Narcissus. Now, coming from a man David Cameron once called a career psychopath, that's quite something. So for that, Mr. Cummings, you are this week's straight talker. And I'm guessing, given your little smooch with David Davis, you, you wouldn't agree. Do you find him attractive? <laughs> David Davis? Yeah. Oh, looks as if I do. But yes, it does. Honestly, I, as I was the, probably the reluctant... I don't look like a like reluctant I participant. I'm not going to say anything else. Well, I he can't. Was, he was coming at you. Well, well clearly no, he doesn't no. mind hugging you. Look what he said about Diane Abbott. So, you know, he didn't mind, did he, old David? <laughs> Poor Diane. So that's it. I've been